Just one week after the 2016 presidential election, when tens of millions of Hillary supporters were still in absolute shock that Donald Trump actually beat her, and while many Trump supporters were in a similar state of surprise since he was the long-awaited anti-establishment underdog, the term fake news became the talk of the town and quickly turned into one of the most loaded and controversial labels in America. It wasn't just a topic that circulated in a week-long news cycle. It was an issue that got more polarizing and complex as the weeks and months went on, and with seemingly every day that passed the fake news conspiracy got deeper and darker. Fake news stories have been around for centuries, although they had just been called disinformation, propaganda, yellow journalism, conspiracy theories, or hoaxes. But this modern incarnation was different. All of a sudden, it was supposedly everywhere and had just cost Hillary Clinton the election. Democrats were so shocked at Hillary's defeat that they couldn't come to grips with the fact that despite all the polls and media coverage painting a picture that Trump would surely lose, he didn't. Instead of accepting the fact that voters wanted a non-politician in the White House for a change and that they wanted the illegal immigration problem fixed, Obamacare overhauled, and a conservative Supreme Court justice to replace Antonin Scalia, who had just died, Democrats started playing the blame game, and their reasons for Hillary's defeat kept getting longer and more bizarre by the day. First, they pointed the finger at FBI Director James Comey for amending his testimony about the investigation into her email scandal when classified materials material sent from her was later found on Anthony Weiner's computer, the then-husband of Uma Aberdeen, her campaign's vice chairman. Then they blamed the white supremacists and the KKK, or the white lash against the black president, as CNN's Van Jones famously cried about on election night. Then they went on to blame Islamophobia, xenophobia, and sexism, and saying that people didn't want a woman president. But then they came up with their most creative excuse ever. An excuse that would serve as a massive umbrella under which all other excuses could be tied together into one grand unified excuse. Fake news. People must have been duped into not trusting or disliking Hillary Clinton because they read lies about her on Facebook, the Democrats concluded. The culprit? Not ordinary right-wing news sites highlighting the reasons why Hillary was wrong for the job or documenting her history of corruption and scandals. No, it was supposed fake news articles that were posted on little-known websites then spread virally through Facebook by people sharing them. The Washington Post led the charge and sounded the alarm with a headline reading, quote, Facebook fake news writer. I think Donald Trump is in the White House because of me. An avalanche of accusations followed, causing a moral panic in the mainstream media as they tried to warn the world about this newly discovered danger. The Washington Post pointed out a few of the most popular actual fake news articles and named the man behind them, Paul Horner, a 38-year-old internet entrepreneur who ran CNN.com.de, CBSnews.com.co, and other fake news websites which were designed to look like actual news sites and used similar URLs. Paul Horner and his fake CNN, ABC, and NBC websites weren't part of a plot to hurt Hillary Clinton or help Donald Trump in the 2016 election. They were just satire, which should be obvious to anyone who actually read past the first two or three sentences of the stories. And Horner's motivation wasn't political, it was financial. Most fake news and satire websites simply want to make money from the web traffic their articles bring to the sites. While a few fake news websites did produce some viral stories during the 2016 election, those stories had no measurable effect on voters. The liberal media, however, seized on fake news publisher Paul Horner's admissions and his viral success and used his stories as if they were the smoking gun and a huge conspiracy to spread disinformation about Hillary Clinton, hoping to prevent people from voting for her despite his stories being satire and designed to actually make fun of Trump supporters. A few of the most viral fake stories about the 2016 election were that Pope Francis shocked the world and endorsed Donald Trump for president, and the Amish in America committed their vote to Donald Trump, quote, mathematically guaranteeing him a presidential victory. And while these stories were designed to bolster Donald Trump and demonize Hillary, 
Fake news is a two-way street. The mainstream media was framing the issue as if all the fake news articles were written to smear Hillary Clinton, but there were plenty of viral fake stories and memes with fake quotes attributed to Donald Trump that were made to smear him as well. For example, one of the most popular memes of the entire election was a fake quote of Donald Trump that cited a non-existent interview with People Magazine, which claimed that he said that Back in the 90s, if he were ever to run as a president, he would do it as a Republican because they're the dumbest voters in America. It started circulating in October of 2015, shortly after Donald Trump announced that he was running for president, and despite being easily and continually debunked, people spread it around for years. It still is spread around today by liberals who think that it's real. It wasn't just people who were writing satirical articles that some gullible people may have thought were true or completely fake stories on obscure websites which hoped to hurt Hillary Clinton that were the supposed culprits. Instead, a new scandal erupted claiming that the Russians were behind the fake news phenomenon as part of a plot to install Trump as their puppet president. One of the biggest liberal papers in the country, the Washington Post, which was dedicated to stopping Donald Trump from becoming president, came out with an article two weeks after the 2016 election titled, Russian propaganda effort helped spread fake news during election, experts say, which claimed that the fake news stories about Hillary Clinton were part of a disinformation operation launched by Russians in order to help Donald Trump win. Their article started off saying, quote, the flood of fake news this election season got support from a sophisticated Russian propaganda campaign that created and spread misleading articles online with the goal of punishing Democrat Hillary Clinton helping Republican Donald Trump and undermining faith in American democracy, say independent researchers who tracked the operation. As Jim Morrison, the singer of the 1960s rock band The Doors, proclaimed, whoever controls the media controls the mind. And with mainstream media losing its power in recent years from countless new websites, blogs, YouTube channels, and Facebook pages functioning as news outlets, the monopoly that major media companies had on the control of information for decades was collapsing. Today, anybody with a Facebook page could post an article, a picture, a video, and in a matter of minutes, it can be seen by just as many people as something broadcast on the national news by a major television network. The media oligarchy could no longer control what information the public was consistently fed or what information was purposely ignored. Many people started to see this new fake news scare as a veiled attempt at censorship and a bold move to try to take back the control of the distribution of media, which is why I wrote my book, The True Story of Fake News. The New York Post ran an article titled, The War on Fake News is All About Censoring Real News, which said that, quote, scrambling for an explanation for Donald Trump's victory many in the media on the left have settled on the idea that his supporters were consumers of fake news. Gullible rubes living in an alternate reality made Trump the president. And they noted that this new fake news scare was in itself fake news. And there was a growing backlash from conservatives who saw this witch hunt for what it was. The backlash was getting so bad that even then, President-elect Donald Trump in a now famous outburst called CNN's Jim Acosta fake news at his first press conference of 2017. Some people in the audience could be heard applauding him, and you are fake news became an instant meme. Like never before, the mainstream media kept making mountains out of molehills and using their platforms to influence public opinion by framing everything Donald Trump said and did in a negative light. Their constant criticism and nitpicking was soon difficult to distinguish from satire or parody because much of it was so absurd, but unfortunately, millions of Americans couldn't help but get swept up in their manufactured controversies. Anti-Trump hatred would soon grow to extremes few could have even imagined, and constant disinformation was whipping people into a frenzy. Conservatives fought back and started fact-checking the liberal media like hawks, and every time CNN or another major news outlet would report some false or absurdly biased story, Trump supporters would shout from the rooftops about it and use each instance to mock the diminishing credibility of the mainstream media. Liberals pushed back even harder and began labeling conservative news websites, YouTube channels, and social media personalities not just as fake news, but as extremists and racists and full of <laughs> hate speech. 
Facebook began implementing fact checkers and issuing warnings when people would post links to certain stories or websites, as well as outright banning links to some or labeling them spam when someone tried to share them. The major social media platforms also implemented stricter terms of service and vowed to crack down on people posting hateful content, which in reality is often just mild criticism of certain liberal policies or ideologies. YouTube began mass demonetizing videos covering certain topics they deemed not advertiser friendly, thus preventing YouTubers like me from making money off of them, which for many people is a part-time or a full-time job in how we pay the bills. This was just the beginning of the censorship tsunami that was heading our way, however. Liberals began going after the advertisers on conservative websites and TV shows to pressure them to pull their sponsorships. Google began scrutinizing websites and YouTube channels which used their AdSense system to generate revenue and anti-feminist videos and videos criticizing radical LGBT activists or ones calling to stop illegal immigration or the massive influx of Muslim refugees were now being stripped of advertisers in droves. YouTube wasn't just for posting funny cat videos or online tutorials anymore. It had become a powerful platform for distributing news and commentary. The YouTube stars weren't just entertainers, beauty vloggers, and gamers anymore, but news commentators and anti-social justice warrior activists. Many found that social media platforms weren't just useful for communicating with friends and family, but the technology could easily be used as a massive publishing outlet, allowing literally anyone to have their content seen and heard by just as many people as a major newspaper or television network. The news and tech conglomerates figured if they could remove the financial incentives for this rapidly growing industry of alternative media platforms and personalities, they could dramatically discourage people from putting out content and commentary, and thus reduce the growing number of conservative voices online whose audience kept growing by the day as more people abandoned mainstream media and were turning to new independent outlets and online personalities for their news and commentary. In my book, The True Story of Fake News, I detail the recent phenomena of fake news and how trying to weaponize the term dramatically backfired on liberals. But I also show you the power and the influence of media in general. Media today now means more than just television, newspapers, and radio. It includes Social media, of course, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, all of which have become major media companies and host and distribute content in quantities previously unimagined. Of course, I cover how these companies manipulate and censor the content that users post, how the trending lists function to restrict certain stories from going viral and artificially aid others to do just the opposite. And you'll see how powerful multi-billion dollar networks can influence public conversation through their agenda setting power. And at the same time, sweep important stories and issues under the rug through lying by omission. If you like my videos, you should really read the book because you'll see without a doubt the real power that the mainstream media has to shape our culture, our fears, our tastes, and how most people are mesmerized by an endless stream of mainstream media and mindless entertainment. Of course, there's a lot more than that, but I can't get into a lot of it here on YouTube for obvious reasons. So if you want to enter the fascinating maze of media manipulation, order my book, The True Story of Fake News, or any of my books really in paperback from Amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores before they get dumped down the memory hole and of course there's a link to them down in the description below to the Amazon listing so be sure to head on over there and check them out.